Okay, so today I'm going to do a quick review of using the Maverio BT200s with the Phantom Vision 2 Plus. This is going to really be geared around the Phantom Vision 2 Plus and using it in that type of an environment. Um, although I'm going to go outside that a little bit with some information. Um, lock the covers, so I'm going to get moving here today. Uh, first we'll go with uh, what's in the box. And the first thing you get is a wall charging jack. And... Um, just a standard wall jack. I will tell you that I've had some issues charging the unit with other blocks. Uh, this block seems to work, but I'm starting to think it might be the cable. Um, so I'm keeping this cable with it. Standard cable, uh, just standard plugs, and um, not much to it. Inside the case uh, comes in a nice case. Uh, the one thing I'd like to say up front is that everything you need is in this case to fly with the Phantom once you do what you need to do to the inside of here. So um, you don't need uh, a phone, you don't need a tablet, you don't need anything else. This is it. Um, which is a good thing and a bad thing to kind of run through it. Uh, so inside the case, uh, basically what you get is uh, the control unit. This is not a screen, it's just a touchpad. If you take a look at it, it looks a lot like uh, an Android device because it is. It's running an Android OS. It's a little bit different in some cases. I'll kind of run through that with you. You have a home button, a back button, a menu button on the side. This is a button that gets you into a few settings. I forget what they are. Uh, you have an SD micro card slot that you have in here to put a micro SD card in there. You have your power and uh, sleep mode switch you have your charging jack and you have your volume up and down. Uh, there's also an LED up here which is used for uh, telling you when it's charging, when it's on and so forth. And then on the bottom you have a single connection. It's a proprietary Epson connection. So there are no other physical connections into this unit. You're not going to take an H HDMI device and put it into the unit. You're not going to take any other type of FPV solution and put this into this unit. This unit is geared for flying uh, FPV where you're running an app with the Vision. Uh, I'm not sure if there's other manufacturers out there doing the same thing, but you're going to run the DJI app, and I'll kind of get into that in a minute. Also in the case, you have uh, just some earbuds and uh, earphones, standard ones, nothing uh, extraordinary, and you have the glasses. And these are the glasses right here. And we'll kind of let you be look in there now. Uh, right now, you probably should be able to see the screens. I'll also flash up another quick image. Uh, the unit has a camera built into it. Uh, the quality of the camera is not that great, um, but it's there. And then coming down the wire on this, you have a block uh, about halfway down, maybe two-thirds of the way down. And there is where you plug in your headphones. No other connections inside that. And then that goes to your proprietary Epson plug which just plugs into the bottom so uh, I had done another video with Dominator goggles and Zeiss goggles and showed them how to interconnect them with uh, Phantom 2 Vision Plus and also showed them how to connect up to flying FPV if you're running like a 5.8 to 2.4 1.3 gigahertz uh, base station uh, you're not going to do that with this I haven't really found a way to do that with this and Although there may be some quirky ways to do it using a thing called Miracast, uh, it's not something that I'm going to spend any time with because I just don't think it's going to be worth the benefit of it. Um, also, in the case, what you get, you get uh, a mid eye shield. I'm going to call this the mid um, because uh, you also get with it, you get a very dark eye shield. And although this looks like it is um, not see-through. It is, and this is the one that you're going to use if you're going to be doing, using FPV out in the sun. If you try to use the mid out in the sun, especially against the sky, even against the trees or anything else, it, the, the picture gets washed out pretty well. Uh, for people with prescription lenses, you get uh, it's nothing in it. It's just a clear thing, and the, this is made for getting prescription lenses put into it. Uh, I will say that out to the edges, the lower left on here, to me it's a little blurry. Uh, the, the glasses, sometimes getting them sitting on your face right to see it. When you're flying the FPV and all that, it really doesn't bother you at all. 
but when you're trying to read something on the screen in the uh, Android OS, it can get a little bit uh, tedious for me. Um, so when you're going FPV, put these right on. Don't even waste your time trying to use the other ones. And these just clip on. Um, don't really like the way this is done. They just kind of pop in there. And then they have a little bit of a rattle to them. And when I was out flying in the sun, uh, in the wind, excuse me, uh, the wind was giving them a little bit of a rattle. It doesn't affect the image at all. But uh, I just think they could have done a better job to get those to kind of stay in there. Um, so that's everything in it. And then the case, you have the case. And uh, that's everything that you get. And it's everything that you need. Um, now there's going to be a lot to cover real quick here. Because uh, the reason this video was delayed was I really wanted to wait until the 7th channel came out for the Vision to see how it affected with this and how it works. This unit has head tracking in it. And I wanted to see a way if there was a way to implement that. And there is. A little quirky, but there is. You can actually get it to work. And I'll run through that in a minute. Um, so basically what you have in here is you have your touchpad. And you can just mount this on your DJI remote. Uh, realistically, you're going to want to turn this so that it sits this way on here if you're going to be using the touchpad portion of it. But you can just clip it right in there. And um, in here, it's just an Android OS. And what I'll do is I'll flash some screenshots up right now of what you have. Basically, if you have an Android tablet, um, you're going to see the menus are going to look very similar, even to an Android phone, except you're not going to have the phone options. This has Wi-Fi built into it. It has Bluetooth built into it. It has a web browser built into it. Um, it has uh, the Moverio Play Store is in it. The Google Play Store is not part of it. Um, but you can get it added, and I'll cover that again in a second. Um, so it's just like having an Android tablet. And basically what you do on this is there's a couple different ways to do it. But basically you download the DJI app on here, and then you run the app. Um, it is a little buggy. Um, it's quirky. I, I don't think that this is full release yet at this point. I've kind of heard that it is. I've kind of heard that it isn't. But it is buggy. It's not something that you're just going to take and everything's just going to work. Sometimes you got to deal with a little bit of quirkiness. But you muddle through it and everything does work. And it works pretty well, uh, except for one issue within the DJI app. And I'll flash up a, an image of that uh, later in this video so you can kind of see that. So basically... Um, what you do if you just want to use them stock, uh, you go and you just browse yourself through the web browser to the DJI website and you download the app and you install it. And you do have to make an adjustment in the settings to uh, be able to install install untrusted apps. Uh, it's just a checkbox. Uh, screenshot should be up there right now showing you where that's at. You check that box, you download it, you install it, and the app goes right in. Uh, where people have had some issues if they're using the booster app, uh, the app that's out that uh, kind of takes off the limits of the distance for ground station, things like that, um, you have to root this. Now, down in, my, in the description below here, I'm going to put a link to a page that gives you all the information. It walks you right through rooting the device. It's very easy. Once you do that, you get the Google Play Store. Once you have the Google Play Store, anything in the Google Play Store is fair game. Download it, put it in. Um, Netflix, whatever you want, um, you just download it, you sign in as you, and you go. It is an extra step, uh, and some people don't like to deal with rooting. It's pretty easy. Um, the directions could be a, a little better on the page, but you can work your way through it pretty easily. So once you do root it you can put the google play store on here and you can do whatever you do on a regular android device at that point if you just take this unit start it up go to the moverio store and try to download the dji app it's not there so that's what you've seen with the confusion it's not really a lot it's not difficult to get past you just got to kind of know what you're looking for uh, you download the dji app and then you launch it now once you launch the dji app uh, Basically, you use this as a touchpad to move around. What you have is you have a cursor in here that works kind of like a mouse. Uh, one of the things that I will say that's a pain on this thing is having to type. When you've got to type in a username or a password or something, it's a little tedious. There's no keyboard. Um, not sure if you could connect a Bluetooth keyboard to make it easier, but uh, you just got to do it letter by letter. So you go, you log into the DJI app, you connect it, and then the DJI app comes up. 
the only major bug, there's a couple bugs in the DJI app, though the one that I would say is the most major is this, what's called the screen shift. And if you look now, um, you'll see where on the left side there is the settings to move your camera up and down. On the right side you have your satellites and everything else. And in the middle you see your image. But to the left of that image you see a black bar and a blank area. And that area is, there's no way as of right now that I can see to get uh, rid of that. It's my understanding that Epson and DJI have both been away, made aware of it. Uh, hopefully that'll get fixed at some point, but that stays. The only way to really mess around with video on this, there's no video resolution settings within this unit. You have to go to the video resolution settings within the DJI app. Uh, I will tell you that I tried all four of those out and a little buggy on some of them. Some days they tend to work better, some days uh, different ones don't, um, but there are ones that work every day. So, uh, but changing that does not affect that black bar that shows up. Uh, that's kind of here to stay at this point. Um, so one of the other things that's happened and just happened within the past week or so is the new version um, of the DJI app, the firmware and everything has come out. And what that's added to this is when you are in the DJI app, um, right now the status of my vision is everything is completely updated. I'm on the standard DJI Vision 2 Plus remote and everything of mine is updated except for the Zen IMU. For anyone that's been following that, the Zen IMU, if you are on 1.0.0.5 or below, um, they're able to get the uh, lever on the back here working where the camera moves in correlation with the lever. You move the lever, it moves with it. You move the lever, it moves with it all the way along. Whereas if you've gone to 1.0.0.6, the lever is centered. If you come to the left off of that center, uh, it starts tilting until you move back to center and then it stops. And the further you move it, the quicker the camera tends to go. Uh, I, have, I have mine set up right now where this camera, it follows this lever exactly as it sits, um, which I kind of like. I'm debating on the new controller, but uh, it works well. With that said, uh, what I've been able to do is this, these glasses have a head tracker built into them. And basically what I've been able to do is when you're in the DJI app, and if I set in the DJI uh, assistant software, if you set up with the new controller type, and then you go into the app, and then you set the camera app to where you used to, if you wanted to tilt your device to be able to tilt the camera as opposed to being able to press the buttons on it, if you do that, when you have these glasses on, they work in tilting the camera. Now, where they get a little quirky is um, they don't tilt the camera by going up and down like this. They don't tilt the camera by going left and right like this. The way you tilt the camera is you tilt your head. And if you tilt it one way, the camera goes up. And if you tilt it the other way, the camera goes down. Now, where it gets a little quirky is it kind of works like that whole issue that people are having with the back switch even though they're on the Zen IMU of 1.0.0.6 because when you're level it's not moving if you move it a little and tilt it it starts moving and then it will not stop until you come back to level so it doesn't work in correlation with the camera where you tilt you tilt you tilt and the camera stops and tilt it works in the method that if you take the glasses and you tilt the camera will start to move and then once the camera stops you can you level the glasses and the camera will stop so um, it does work now if I switch back in that remote assistant software to the basic setup then um, what happens is I can use this on the back of here to move my camera up and down in correlation with this but what happens is when I launch uh, the app, uh, the buttons on the app do not work. So I'm, I'm, I'm stuck using this, which I don't mind because the buttons on the app I think are kind of useless. Um, but so there's a little give and take, and I have to, depending on what, how, which way I want to fly, switch that before I go out to the field in the assistant software, or I have to take my laptop with me and just connect up real quick if I want to switch. Now, uh, that's a lot to cover. 
let's get into the glasses and how well they work and what they do well and what they don't do well. Um, because they have their strengths, uh, definitely has its strengths, definitely have its, has its weaknesses. The image inside the uh, in here is very clear, very crisp. You can see everything, especially with the dark shade on when you're outside. Um, you have that transparency, so it's not as um, blunt as using a Fat Shark or a Zeiss where it's just screen and there's nothing else there. So what I found is things like uh, I have a black fence that I fly around at one of the fields and seeing that fence is not as prominent in these as it is but you can see it and you can see what's going on. It's really neat because you can see through the glasses or you can look at the screen and see what's going on in the glasses. That's your advantage of these. Uh, your disadvantage to these are they're not going to integrate with any other type of FPV system that I can see right now and um, they're not as it's not as deep now when you have the dark shade on and you have a dark background like a black case or the trees you pick things up a little bit better than when you're looking up at the blue sky that's not to say that the image in here is washed out at all it's not it's very clear when you're focused on it it's all you see you don't see anything going on on the outside but it's not as an immersive experience as you get with the fat shark or with the Zeiss because the lights coming in from the outside and you have everything going on looking through the glasses so with the fat shark and the Zeiss you don't have anything else to focus on except that image um, and a disadvantage to that is with the fat shark or the Zeiss that when you want to change something and you have your phone or whatever sitting down on your uh, controller you if you want to make changes you can't feel for the buttons you're going to actually be pulling them off your face to kind of make adjustments whether it's in ground station or whether it's with tilting the camera prior to having the lever or anything like that uh, with these you can simply just put your finger on here and you have a cursor that moves around so you can just move around on this without having to look down or look out or anything along those lines which makes it very nice um, it is a little buggy when you're in the, the Vision app. Um, the cursor can disappear on you a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to pick up, especially in the sun. So it's not a perfect solution, but it does work well. And um, But it is a little quirky, again. A uh, couple other quick things to cover about this. Uh, there are two versions out there available if you're going to purchase these. There is a D version and an R version, retail versus developer. Basically, I uh, have some links below here, which will give you some more information on that. Basically, if you have the retail version, you can convert it to developer. Once you do that, you cannot convert back to retail. A developer version, you cannot convert to retail at any point. So, uh, if you're going to purchase them, the only way to know what you're going to get is to ask who you're, who, you know, who you're purchasing them from. And if you want to see what version you have, you can go look into the settings and you can see if it's an R or a D version, and that'll tell you if it is. Overall, I think they're a great solution. You need to see if they fit what you want to do with them, or whether you want to go with something more like the uh, Zeiss or the the Fat Shark if you're doing other things. But I think they're a great solution, especially for videography and using the uh, vision as a camera. I think they're awesome. Um, the image quality is good even out in the sun. It's not really washed out. It's just, uh, it is not as immersive, again, like I said, with the Zeiss or the, uh, the Fat Shark. So, um, that's everything that I wanted to cover with these. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please give me a, uh, drop me a PM. I'll be glad to help you out. They can be a little cumbersome to get up and running. Um, Dominator HD reviews coming in a couple weeks. I should have those soon. I'm number 29 on the list now. They're starting to ship. Dominator HDs are not HD. They do have an HDMI in. They're not see-through glasses. They're more goggles, but I am going to have some information up about those. And if you have any questions or need any help with anything, drop me a line. And other than that, safe.